Okay. Right, well, well, thank you everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, my name's Hayley. I'm the Sales and Marketing Director at Linton Lasers, and this is Dr. Jonathan Exley, who's the Managing Director at Linton. Hello. And uh, welcome to our live webinar, where you'll have the opportunity to ask us questions as we go. Uh, but essentially the premise of this webinar really is to share with you uh, the Linton story but as part of that how we actually use values within our business as a business tool, uh, how we've developed a brilliant company culture at Linton um, and just to give you really I guess some history and some ideas around uh, you know the formation of that culture, the formation of the values and how we use them now to drive our team of employees, to drive behavior. And I guess more importantly, how we've actually used our culture and our value, um, our value system to actually build up an incredibly loyal customer base and, and client base. So I'll just very quickly tell you um, a little bit about Linton if you don't know us. Um, so we were a manufacturer of um, aesthetic devices. We do have a speciality in laser and IPL, but we manufacture lots of different technologies that cover a wide array of skin and hair conditions. And we've been in business for 25 years. We're actually a spin-off company from University of Manchester. But that's not really who Linton are. What we are is a bunch of um, people who uh, or work for Linton and share an amazing company culture. And we're, we're about 50 people or so now, and it's quite difficult to manage culture as a business grows, but it's something that we've worked hard on at Linton and we've been successful so far in developing this brilliant company culture. And we've actually articulated our company culture in a set of company values. So these are our company values. They are reliability, quality, integrity, positivity and care. And we use this value system, like I said, to, to really do two things, to build a loyal client base and to recruit and retain exceptional talent in the business. And it's these are so incredibly helpful and useful. Um, up until recently, we hadn't actually articulated our values so so we knew that we've got a great culture um, and we were actually audited weren't we John by investors in people yeah yeah last year um, and in, investors in people if you don't know it everyone is a um, it's like an, an, an award or an accreditation um, to show that you do great people management and you deliver great people management so you get audited every few years and you get approved. And we were, we were successful last year in our accreditation for IIP. And as part of that audit, actually, the, the guy that came in to do the audit, you know, he sort of sat us down as a management team and said, you've got an amazing culture here. Like everyone is behaving the same way. Everyone's demonstrating the same sort of values, but you've not actually got them written anywhere or got it articulated anywhere. We sort of sat down and thought to ourselves, oh, <laughs> you're right, we, we probably should. And I'm so, so glad that we did. I can't tell you as a manager how useful I find having these values actually articulated, written down and placed visibly around the business. And I'm going to talk about how we actually, you know, the nitty gritty of how we use them at Linton what they mean to us and, and how that's really led to the company that we are today. And, you know, how do you work out what your value system is? Every business, no matter whether you're a one man band or you're a big employer, I would highly, highly recommend that you have a think about your business values. It's a way of explaining your identity as a business. Um, you know what it is you're really about and, and why is that important well because it's not just about sales and turnover and profit you know you are being bombarded I'm sure this week with lots of um, talks about getting your brand online running Facebook lives being a you know digital uh, hero in terms of your marketing and pushing out a sales message but what we've learned over the years 
is that we've been through some pretty tough times um, and I'm going to just talk you through those as we go. But one thing that has stood us in great stead over that time is our value system. It's really helped to um, guide us in our decision making and it's really helped to build strength and stability in the business. You know, people are interested in the people behind the brand. People are interested in what you stand for. Um, and, and I expect that there are many, many clinic owners watching this now who have a brilliant set of values, a value system already. But are you articulating that? You know, is that, does that only have the opportunity to come across when you've actually got someone in front of you one-on-one? -on -one? How well are you communicating it on your website? How well are you communicating it in, in everything that you do? Um, because it could be that, that, this is something which you could use um, in your marketing to really get across what you stand for and what makes your your business different. Can and I just and say then, as well? Yes. Sorry, Haley, to chip in, but the one thing I remember yeah. that's hugely important as well is that um, you, your values should try and reflect what 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 are already in your business. Hmm. A lot of companies, the, the guy from the Investors in People said. You know, a lot of companies create values, stick them on the wall, but it's about reflecting the values. And the best values are those that you can pull out of what's already there. Yeah. So you don't just sit down and think, what do I want to be? Yeah. Look at yourself and say, what are my really good attributes already as a business? And reflect those in your values. I think that's really important. It's a good point. Everybody's values are going to be different. So these are the Linton values, but each business will have their own values and it's like how do you how do you find out what they are and uh, so yeah we're just going to talk you through how we found out our values I guess and the, the things that we realized over time and we do know that we've we do know we've got this you know we um, we have a really great uh, uh, story I think here to share with you that kind of demonstrates or evidences are the, the way that we've built an incredibly loyal client base. So we were fortunate enough to be uh, voted as the best manufacturer in the UK at the Aesthetic Awards last year. So that this was just December just gone. And we're really pleased to win this award, but perhaps um, more rewarding was actually the email that we got after the award ceremony. So this is an email that um, we were sent from Chloe, Chloe Gronow, who is the editor at Aesthetics Journal and they manage the aesthetic awards and she sent me this email after the event and it just said i just wanted to you know drop your congratulations but i've also attached a document with feedback from the judges and from the voters we don't usually do this but there are literally hundreds of lovely comments in there that you can definitely make the most of in your marketing and i mean she wasn't joking she sent me this spreadsheet and it was just hundreds and hundreds of lovely lovely comments from people that have voted for us for this award so you know the sorts of um there was there was a definite theme within the comments you know solid manufacturer takes patient safety very seriously this person said they've been a customer since 2003 we deliver fantastic service training is second to none um outstanding support um superb training and then this one was probably my favorite one this one was these guys are just good humans <laughs> that's the, the 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 testimonial that someone left for us in there so it was really good really heartwarming obviously as you can imagine to see that um and something that you know we've 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 actively worked on i guess and um decided that that that's the sort of business that we want to run the sort of business that creates very loyal um fans and that's something which you can do as well so there's absolutely no doubt that our values led to all of that amazing feedback um, and I'll, I'll walk you through the journey I guess and, and start with the very early early days of Linton so this bunch of incredibly <laughs> handsome chaps and ladies <laughs> uh, part of the um, Department of Physics within Manchester University back in the early 90s so um, at this time, you've got this chap here. This is Dr. Andrew Charlton, and he was a PhD physicist. He, he actually studied at Oxford. 
And this chap here, this is Dr. Andy Berry. And again, he's an Oxford PhD physicist. And these are now the, the founders and the owners of Linton Lasers. And alongside that, we have this chap here in the back, <laughs> who is a, an unending source of humour in our board meetings, even through to today. So what this, this team of very, very smart people were working on was actually one of the world's first Q-switch lasers for pigmented lesions. So back in the early 90s, you know, Q-switch wasn't used really within aesthetics for this type of treatment. And the, the, the team at the university were actually given some funding to look at laser and light tissue interactions. So what came out of that was, was this amazing technology, which actually allowed us to, um, to produce a laser system which had the ability to treat things like these pigmented birthmarks, and pigmented lesions. So this is, a, this is someone that was treated with a, a Linton laser. And as you can see, the results are amazing. Very, very popular treatment in the NHS uh, back in its day. And, you know, Linton actually, um, in producing these machines as part of the, the university before we were Linton, um, actually gave a lot of systems out to the NHS. And they had ran clinical trials with the NHS to get feedback, obviously, on the technology. And they realised that there was a good opportunity there to actually set up a commercial company. So Andy, Andy and Dave um, that you saw previously set up this commercial entity, which was Viewman Lasers. And then a few years later, they rebranded to Linton Lasers. And luckily, things took off. So there was actually a really strong demand for this sort of technology over in the Far East. So you can see the chaps here over in uh, Taiwan, I think maybe, um, but we had uh, Taiwan, uh, Korea, China, um, so very much a, a hub of activity going on in the Far East where obviously there's quite a lot of skins with pigmentation. So the technology was really, really popular there. So it just sort of hit the market at the right time and it just took off. Um, it was quite novel, it was very unique, uh, British brand, which people liked. So yeah, it was a uh, exciting times for Linton. And then uh, the team grew and started to expand. So you can see we've, we've added an addition into the team here. So this is quite Isn't unrecognizable, John. No, <laughs> this picture. <laughs> so this is John. Back, back yeah. in his um, younger days. And <laughs> colour in my hair. Man. Take a look at this really old laser. <laughs> and not John, the laser. So this is, um, this is the sort of device we were producing back then. So this is a Q-switch. Um, and we actually just recently received a letter from a consultant in a hospital. Um, that said, I'm retiring, but I just wanted to write you this letter, Linton, to say that I've, I've been using the Q-switch that you sold me 20 years ago, right up until this day. And I just want to thank you for building such a good piece of equipment. I've had so many delighted patients with the results, and I've been delighted that I'm retiring and the laser is still going strong. And this laser is, in fact, still going strong in hospital. <laughs> to this day so that was lovely but it brings us to our first value which is quality so something that we recognized about our business back then was that we had a real um, attention to detail and quite high standards and we articulate this now as a quality uh, value so we really pay attention to the detail we don't cut corners you know, we really work to very high standards. And that's something which, you know, again, we get an awful lot of feedback on about our, uh, our equipment, the quality of the equipment and the quality of the service that we provide. And this may be something for you to think about in your clinics. You know, are you articulating to people why your quality standards are higher than your competitors? Are you articulating what you know the finer details of what you do 
in order to be a quality leader, perhaps in your area? Perhaps, you know, what does quality look like for you? Perhaps quality isn't quite the right word for it. But is there something that you're doing in your business that's going above and beyond? And could you be articulating that in a value to help drive the behavior of your team and also to help, you know, get across really that message to your customers about what makes you a little bit different? So things start to then really go exceptionally well at LinkedIn as we move into the late 90s. Um, we diversify, so we introduce some different technologies into the uh, portfolio that we sell. And we actually introduce some new team members as well. So this is Kirsty the dog, and I'll let John tell you yeah. a nice little story about Kirsty the dog. Yeah, so, so, so what we see here is Andy Charlton, obviously, uh, who uh, was a managing director of LinkedIn at the time, and he got um, a border collie dog that he used to bring into the office. Can you, am I still going here? Because it looks like I'm at frozen. I don't know if you can hear uh, me. You here. look fine to me. Okay, good. So, uh, so yeah, he used to bring his dog into the office and uh, she was a lovely dog, but a little bit wild. So he used to have to tie her up uh, in his office. And I can remember once we had some Oh yeah, we just lost you there for a second. Ooh. Yeah. Sorry. That's all right. We only lost you, I think, momentarily. So no problem. Well, I was just going to say that Kirsty was tied up in the office. We had some Koreans over for a really important meeting. We we're trying yeah. to get a big deal, and they were all in the meeting. And um, unfortunately, Kirsty broke free. Yeah. No joke. It was an absolute disaster. She ran around the office. Everyone trying to catch her. She got into the boardroom and literally ran around the table with these Koreans and. We thought, what a disaster. And he's chasing after quarter eventually and going back into the office. And uh, we were all just dismayed, thinking, oh, this is the worst meeting you could possibly have. But for whatever reason, the Korean sort is fantastic and literally signed the deal for a lot of lasers to, the, to, their, uh, to their company. And so we, we were obviously delighted. Andy thought it was fantastic. And he actually contacted the local papers to say, you know, Kirsty the dog sort of wins the deal for Linton. And so the local papers thought it was a good story, published it. You know what they say about any publicity is good publicity. Um, and it, and it, it expanded actually, it had some other papers contact us and say, oh, I'd like to go with this story as well. Tell me a little bit more about it. And Andy thought, I'll take advantage of that. I'll get more publicity. And it got to the point where the national papers got hold of him. The son rang up Andy and said, listen, Andy, great story we want a little twist on it can you say that the dog signed the deal with his paw print and of course at that point even Andy thought, that's not the sort of publicity I'm going for and just decided uh, enough was enough. enough so we enough. didn't quite get into the sun but uh, but yeah Kirsty became a legend in Linton's history of course she became a valued part of the team <laughs> she did yeah <laughs> She didn't get to travel the world like a, a lot of uh, you guys did, though, back then. So you were here, there and everywhere. I've heard, heard lots of stories about this. Um, so, yeah, Linton continued to grow. And we got to the point now where we'd actually made sales. And we realised that rather than just going for a new distributor, new distributor, new distributor, we actually wanted to hold back a little bit and just make sure that we developed long lasting, secure relationships with our existing distributors. So I guess what that really looked like is, you know, rather than chasing the sale, we were back at this time, very, very keen to make sure we provided exceptional service and reliability to our partners. And that's something which is very, very important to Andy, Andy, Dave and John, who at this time are essentially running the business. And, um, you know, that's something which has really carried through throughout our 25 year history. Um, to give you an example, this, this is Dave here, to give you an example, um, John's going to tell you a little story about how Dave was exceptionally reliable with one of our customers once. 
It's a, well, this is typical Dave, very resourceful guy, Dave. Um, if any of you know him from the past, or I mean, still involved with Minton today, uh, but he, he used to do a lot of the service work, a lot of the engineering work. And we had a distributor out in China. At the time, he was selling our lasers, and he had a very big launch. It was going to be on TV, uh, and they were it was, for them. It's you know hugely important. And we got the laser over there, and it needed installing and setting up properly. And Dave had flown out to uh, to do that. And in fact, it was it was out in some remote part of China where this TV studio was. It, you know, remember this is going back about twenty years now, and. Uh, when he got there, they had to fly him overnight uh, to, to this location. And unfortunately, his toolkit didn't make it. So he got there about one o'clock in the morning, no toolkit. When he got to the laser, and they were saying, look, you know, we've got about five, six hours to get this thing up and running overnight, ready for this TV show tomorrow morning. All he had on him was a Swiss Army knife. So being resourceful, being very reliable, not wanting to let the customer down, Dave famously, famously in Linton at least, uh, thought, I can do this. I've got a Swiss Army knife. First of all, I need to get into the laser, and you need a special Allen key. So he found some chopsticks, uh, wooden chopsticks with his Swiss Army knife. He fashioned the end of the chopstick into the right shape of Allen key, and he managed to undo all the screws using his, his uh, homemade Allen key out of the chopstick. And then when it comes to aligning the Q-switch laser, he needed a special sort of alignment tube and he got some old coke cans and cut the bottoms out and strapped them all together and created a, an alignment tube and he, and he managed to align the laser essentially with only a Swiss army knife. It worked all through the night just in time, put it all back together, ready for the TV show launch in the morning. Fantastic. <laughs> you know. Doesn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those who know Dave, that's just how, you know, he, he'll never let you down, very resourceful, <laughs> hugely reliable guy. And that does bring us to then the the reliability. So so when we were thinking about our business and what culture was there and how to articulate it, reliability was one of the key things that really came through for us. You know, we, we always try to do our best. You know, lasers will have technical problems. It's about how you look after people when they do have technical problems. Um, and that's something which we've always done. We've always tried our very best to make sure that we provide a reliable service for our customers and that, that really builds trusting and lasting relationships so if you're in a clinic I guess this could look like you know if you say you're going to do something if you say you're going to follow up um, following up uh, just just being there being reliable for your patients um, being reliable for your team as well so so this is this is also a, a value system that our team can depend on from us. We'll always be reliable with them. Um, and this helps to drive behavior across the business as well. So that, that really um, worked well for us, you know, up until this point, we were on a bit of a roll. It, things are really paying off. Um, you can see a couple of sports cars there for Andy. And of course, we didn't forget to reward Kirsty the dog for setting up that great deal for us. <laughs> in South Korea and yeah. unfortunately there was a disaster on the horizon though so in the late 90s there was a big economic crisis in Asia so so pretty much where most of our business was they just had a major economic crisis and that actually resulted in us you know it's, it pretty much wiped out our sales overnight it was a, a yeah. massive knock for the business um, not exactly the same as the situation we've got right now, but not far off. Um, obviously a different set of circumstances, but equally challenging uh, and difficult to navigate. So, I, I mean, I wasn't part of the business at this time. And I know, John, that you, you were sort of only four years in or so, I think, weren't you? So yeah. we can't exactly speak exactly for, for Andy and Dave during this time, Andy, Andy and Dave during this time, but obviously... There was a lot of realigning, readjusting, much like there is for us now. A lot of strategy planning, a lot of hard work, tough times. But when you talk to, you know, the, the guys about this experience, you know, they do come back to it with positivity. You know, one of the things we often say at Linton is, you know, 
don't bring us a problem, bring us a solution. You know, there may be challenges in front of you, but think about the solutions that are available and, and, and be positive. And I think it is, it's quite challenging to be very positive at the moment in, in terms of the current climate. But we at Linton think this is a really important value and it's a value we carry across our business to try and look at problems in a positive light um, and to try and keep that sort of can do attitude really with us wherever we go, whatever we do. Um, and that's something which we've, again, is a value that we've kind of built, built into the culture really over the years. I like the, um, there's a quote, I think it's Einstein said, um, in the middle of a huge challenge, look for the opportunity. You know, great quote. And I yeah. think you have to do that. It doesn't always seem obvious. Yeah. But just have a look. What opportunity does it bring you? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And fortunately, you know, we did survive that, that period of time. And we did so because we were able to adjust and we were able to realign. So although our business had started to, well, had fallen apart, so to speak, in, in certain countries, we had actually um, been sponsoring yourself, John, to do a PhD. And so you'd spent the last four years working on some brand new technology, which um, now that you'd completed your PhD and we found ourselves in this situation, actually proved to be a really um, important milestone, I guess, for the business. Absolutely. I mean, um, it's amazing I spent four years on such uh, what is relatively a small topic. Uh, in fact, I thought you might like to see the actual, the actual work itself. Yeah. Uh, this is my thesis. I don't know if you can see it very well there. Four years to write this, um, which is now used as a doorstop in my office. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the reality is, yeah, it was, um, it, it was a lot of hard work, a lot of research. Um, it was a great idea that's turned out to be a fantastic product. You know? mm. so, so essentially, this was the start of Linton IPL technology, wasn't it? So, so up until this point, when you started that PhD, IPL didn't really exist. Mm. So laser was used for um, some aesthetic procedures, but again, it was still fairly early days for that. Mm. And... Um, you know, you'd sort of got, got this idea that you could use a broadband source of light instead and then right. work, worked on that for your PhD. And over the next four years, John perf absolutely perfected um, the interaction between the Linton handpiece and the power supply. So within this handpiece, you have things like filters and flash lamps and our, our array in here is, is essentially what John spent chunk of his life <laughs> developing and perfecting yeah. and this is why um, a Linton IPL is so different to other IPL systems on the market and this is why the NHS use it for vascular and pigmented conditions because it, the quality of the light that you get out is because of all the hundreds of tweaks and changes that you made um, in that time doing your studies trying to get the most perfect kind of light out, yeah, out of the IPL. We've also spent a lot of time computer modelling as well. I mean, it's quite uh, a big thing at the moment, isn't it, with the, the, the virus computer modelling, but spent uh, a long time developing computer simulations of light going into tissue mm -hmm. so that we could determine the best parameters to get the best results. Mm. And then looking at how we made the right handpiece to deliver those parameters. I, I often say, like, it's, e it's easy to make a... a, a, a a flash lamp in a box, which is what people think IPL is, yeah. it's very, very difficult to make quality, you know, to get a quality output with clinical results, but at the same time being very safe and effective. Mm -hmm. and that's what took four years, really, of studying and understanding how does light interact with the skin, mm -hmm. different things in the tissue, and then how do we make an IPL do what we need it to do, right pulse, right wavelength, mm -hmm. right fluence, for example. And anyone that's worked with one of our IPLs knows that the efficiency is extremely high. So the results you get are, are amazing. So thanks, John. Thanks for that. <laughs> Glad to be useful. So it proved to be very useful for us at Linton as well. Um, it meant that we had a, an opportunity to grow in the UK um, because the, the treatments, the, it, the, uh, the Lumina system that our IPL technology went into were incredibly popular treatments still are today 
And so we expanded, we, we moved into Holmes Chapel, which is in Cheshire. So still Northern based, but a little bit more further outside of Manchester, just to get a little bit more space. And we expanded the team as well. So some of you will recognize up here, this is Dr. Sam Hills, who's now our clinical director. And she was a, a buddy of yours from um, university, wasn't she, John? So again, she's a PhD physicist and uh, we thought she was excellent. So recruited her into the business uh, and did the same thing with Dr. Ben Dickinson who again is a PhD physicist and this now makes up um, the board of directors at Linton and um, myself, Ben, Sam, John, Andy, Andy and Dave. Um, we're the directors now at Linton and um, yeah just just more more PhDs into the business, more um, people within sales, within marketing, within customer service, engineers and trainers and so on. And we got to our 10th birthday which is obviously a brilliant achievement for us and started to really look at our marketing and our branding to kind of bring us you know give a, a fresher brand identity and at this point we we sort of really had honed in on the fact that we were very very good at after sales so we sort of naturally recognized that we'd built this reputation for really supporting people after the sale and as a result, I know, John, you're involved in the strategic decision to yeah. make this more of a focus. I can, remember, I can remember actually having a meeting where we were just thinking, you know, starting to become a bit more strategic about the way we approach things uh, and thinking, how, how are we different from our competition? And, um, and the, you know, during the meeting, we all realised that we did a lot more of our support for our customers than, than anyone else at the time, you know training, technical support, all of that was massive for us in Linton. But it hadn't really occurred to us up until that point that we were different. Mm. It just seemed the thing to do. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden we've got this consultant working with us and we just said, well, that's it. That's why you're so different. And that became you know, a focus for us even more than it had been. And that only really comes from the fact that you genuinely care. You know, you don't get that through. You can't really fake this bit, can you? You know, you have to really care about people. And this is a value that I'm sure many aesthetic clinics have. But on your website, if you're just communicating products and treatments and services, you know, are you doing yourself a bit of an injustice? C could you be communicating more about what examples of the care that you deliver for your um for your customers you know could you be articulating it more in a set of values for people and could you be using it you know to really again just guide those guide your behavior and guide the behavior of your team as well because we do that here at linton and it, it really helps us with all of the decisions that we make so we recently sat around a table um obviously when we heard we were going into lockdown and all of our customers would, would need to go into lockdown as well we sat around the table and, and had to make some pretty difficult decisions and um, we did various elements of financial modeling didn't we John and, and sort of looked at what the options were and it essentially what came out of that meeting was that we would give all of our customers a oh saying my internet is poor can you hear me yeah I can hear you uh can't decide whether it's mine or yours but it broke up a little bit then but okay, well I'll, I'll 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 restart <laughs> so yeah so we, we've essentially taken the decision you'll see on social media to give all of our customers a, a payment um freeze is the wrong word we've just um said that there won't be any charge for service contracts within april and may mm -hmm. and the same for rental uh, payments as well and and this is a decision that essentially we just decided it was the right thing to do it doesn't come without its consequences um for us does it but it, it comes from this value of caring about our customers and you know we all sat around the table and decided that this was the right thing to do and so if if you ever have moments where you do the right thing you show extreme care for a patient or for a staff member then th these are things that perhaps your customers will want to hear about they will perhaps help you to build that that really loyal 
customer base um, showing people that you really care about them during this time um, will help to build uh, fans essentially for your business you, you'll notice at linton we are doing nothing but promoting free education and the payment holidays at the moment we are not trying to you know put across a very heavy sales pitch on machines you know we're not, we're not bombarding people with machine 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 product 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 it's important to just give some free advice some free information some free content and that i think that really shows people that you that you care and that's really the 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 tech that we've taken i guess at this time uh oh yeah we got some lovely feedback as well from one of our customers um recently after the payment freeze that said thank you um, you're always there for us and so this is you know elaine one of our lovely customers has, has given us this great feedback and then we can share that on our social media so elaine's happy we're happy everyone's happy so back to the late 2000s and again business is going extremely well so we're selling lasers all over the world now starting to get a really big team of people together and then da -da -da, another another setback so financial crisis 2008 and a very 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 difficult um 18 months to two years i guess i know yeah. you john were very very much involved in the strategy at this point weren't you yeah i mean it was i'm sure a lot of people can remember this it, it's like every time you get going something comes along just to knock you back a bit you know and this, this arrived uh, we were just uh, opening our first clinic uh, as a business and I remember driving along uh, thinking how exciting that was uh, and I heard it on the news, I heard the radio say about Northern Rock uh, gone bump and thinking wow that, that's a big deal and that's it, it, it hit us, um, the economy grinds to a halt, you know, it's a very difficult time for two or three years uh, but it's just about you know again looking at your core strengths, making the right decisions, realigning your business for the future all those things that are relevant today, just as much today as they were, you know, back in 2008. Mm. Somebody asked me, actually, I was running through this presentation and somebody asked me, well, what, how did Linton come back from this? How, you know, what do you really think enabled you to survive the setbacks? And I oh, link it to sorry, our... You broke up a bit there. Sorry. Uh, hopefully that's me back. Um, so yeah, what, what really allowed us to recover? So, so essentially we, we had a really tough year, 2008, 2009, and then in 2010 we had a bumper year, didn't we? We had, we had yeah. huge growth in 2010. And yeah. the reason that, you know, sort of asking the, the, the guys that own Linton, you know, what, what really made that happen? And it was because we'd got, we'd, we'd actually built by this point a lot of integrity a nice reputation for integrity and I think when people are coming out of recession and tough times they want a safe option you know they're a bit less um, willing to take a punt and take a gamble on the business they've never heard of you know they want the business that has been communicating with them in the right way putting across the right messages hasn't just been bombarding them necessarily with sales information but shown that they care shown that they're reliable, that they're credible, that they deliver a quality service. Particularly, obviously, with capital equipment, people are a bit more risk, they were a bit more risk averse. And so when, when things did get back to normality, um, there was a little bit, um, it was a little bit easier, perhaps, for companies like us, who had really focused on a more human message, rather than the overt sales message i think so so yeah i think that obviously the values have stood us stood us in great um greatly over these years and over that time <laughs> so with their newfound wealth andy and dave got some plastic surgery you can see they're <laughs> looking a lot nicer here <laughs> i'm joking um yeah so so this is a point john at which you became our md and, and Andy became our chairman and you moved into the role of managing director. Yeah, Andy's involved with quite a few uh, other laser companies, another spin-off from the University of Manchester actually. And he went to spend uh, a bit more time with them and gave me the opportunity to take on the uh, 
the head role, which is fantastic. And um, we've made some really good strategic changes over the past decade, really, haven't we? So yeah. our aesthetic business has, has grown and grown, and I'll, I'll mention that in a second, but just a good opportunity to talk about diversification. Um, this is yeah. something which is working well for us right now because the NHS is still purchasing lasers um, because they do life-saving procedures. So obviously they still need them. So whereas our aesthetic revenue stream has um, halted temporarily or will halt, I guess, temporarily, our NHS revenue um, is something which isn't affected at this time. So the diversification we've got in the business has actually allowed that to happen. So if, if anyone does have any opportunities to diversify, uh, now perhaps is a good time to think about that. I know lots of people are going to online consultations, etc., aren't they? But um, yeah, I don't know if you want to tell people what a what the surgical lasers are. Yeah, doing. We, we do a number of surgical lasers, but the, this one's my favourite, and. Um, it's called the Limax laser. It's used for two treatments. You can treat lung metastases, which are basically secondary cancers of the lung, and you can actually cut them off the lung perfectly. And it's uh, special because it can seal up the lung afterwards with the, the laser heat. And that um, allows for operations to be much more successful than the traditional methods. But what this is used for, and it's particularly important at the moment, is um, some people have blockages in their airways, so growths or cancer in their, in their airways, and this laser can go down optical fiber. It can actually cut the cancers out of people's throats or the tumors. And uh, again, you can do it without a lot of bleeding, so it allows you to do that you know, just through a fiber. And, and although, you know, obviously we're all preoccupied with the COVID-19 in, in the NHS, but there are people you know, who are still having problems you know, and need treatments, they're nothing to do with COVID. And, and that's one of those treatments that saves people's lives every day. And so we have to support those lasers. And there are two hospitals that are just taking delivery of these new lasers now. So very important part, you know, for, for some people, huge important surgery that's still going on within the NHS, of course, at, at this time. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting element of the business, that. Um, I also think conservation is, is another interesting thing that perhaps a lot of people aren't aware of. So if you're a Linton customer, this is something, again, which maybe is something you could talk about to your customers, just a, a different point of interest. So um, we actually, the, the Q-switch technology that we use to remove tattoos in the aesthetic world is the same technology, essentially, as what's used to clean dirt and soot off um, precious artifacts, statues and the like and buildings and so you can actually perfectly remove the dark material and leave the structure underneath unharmed and unchanged so very very useful for cleaning very delicate things so i think this is lincoln cathedral actually but we've our lasers have been used to clean it's not that church there i can't i can't recall that lincoln we do use it on lincoln cathedral but that's i think the left hand side might be lincoln lincoln so we, our lasers are used to clean things like Buckingham Palace, they've been used for, they've been used to clean um, St. Paul's Cathedral, Lincoln Cathedral, and um, we've actually uh, last year donated, was it last year, donated a laser to yeah. the Vatican? Yeah, a few years ago now, a, few years a couple of years ago, we actually got um, asked by the Vatican if they could specifically get one of our lasers to clean some of the, in the Vatican City Gardens, there are some statues outdoors that needed cleaning. And so um, the Vatican had contacted us uh, to see if we could actually uh, help with one of our lasers, which happens to be more portable, and we could take it out into the gardens and they actually end up with our laser, which is fantastic. That was a nice phone call to get, I bet, John. It was, yeah. <laughs> and he said, it, said it's the Pope. and. Uh, <laughs> One of, his, one of the officials anyway. You can see how effective it is there. Very effective yeah. technology, isn't it? So that, that really, I guess, sort of brings us up to date um, to, to where we are now. So we're celebrating our 25th birthday now. Um, and we're still very much um, true to that after sale support. So we have the biggest team of engineers in the UK for laser companies. We've got nine engineers 
got a massive team of clinical trainers and there's about 50 people all together within Linton. So we're by far the biggest company in terms of after sale support um, for customers and expanded last year. So we, we got too big for the building that we were in and actually set up a whole new site where we, um, we've got brand new offices and a training academy and we've put our, our clinic in there as well. So we're all in one spot. So there's quite a lot of investment last year and it just seems that every time we invest, we get one of these little hiccups along the way, don't yeah, we? So, stop investing. <laughs> yeah, stop spending money and keep it in the bank. So we, we've, we've, we've obviously got a huge customer base at the moment and it's been so fantastic to, I guess, well, I guess to be there for them during this time because... Um, it's nice to build those bonds, develop those relationships as suppliers, but also just to hear how fantastically positive our clinics are being as well um, during this time and how they're re realigning and readjusting to the current um, environment. So, yeah, thank you to all of our lovely, lovely customers. And thank you for those of you that voted for us in the Aesthetics Awards last year. Um, we were very, very pleased to have won numerous awards, really, over the years. Um, we've won awards for customer service, for training, uh, for being the, the, the best laser company in the UK. And I have no doubt whatsoever that that is down to, obviously, good marketing, good products. But more importantly, it is the value system that we have within Linter. It's the, it's the culture that we've been able to create within our team. And it's these, these very in, inherent values that we have. So I'll just briefly talk you through, you know, the sort of the, the ins and outs of the process of how we got to having this, this list of values. So we actually worked with an external consultant, didn't we, John, who came in and, and sat, sat down with all the directors of the business and got us to really think about what are we doing right now that is different to other people? What is it that makes us unique? What are we really proud of in our in our culture, yeah. I guess? Yeah. And then we actually, you know, kind of a bit of a brainstorm, you know, thought of lots of different terms, ways of describing it, things that we were doing, got them all down on a big whiteboard and came up with a list of probably 20 or so. Yeah. And then as a team of directors, we got that down to a list of about 10. And then we actually sent that out to our team um, so you could maybe send this out to maybe even a small focus group of your customers and see what they think. But of that list of 10, we asked our team to just think about what they felt were the, 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 the values that described us best. Um, and that's how we eliminated the additional ones and got down to our list of five, five yeah. values. What I liked about that, Hayley, was remember us saying, well, these are probably the top three or four that we like, but let, let's put out all 10 of them. Mm. And they came back, everybody said, you know, pick those three or four. Yeah. So it's what made me realise it's not just us thinking, this is what we want our values to be. It's about this is what our values actually are at the moment. And so we publish them now. So what that means is we've actually got graphic wall stickers. So like all one, along one wall in the office and all up the stairwell, we have our values and that's an embedding tool it, it's it's there to be visible to be it, you know um driving the behavior in our team so it's quite funny you know you'll work through the office and you'll hear them pointing each other out on values occasionally if someone's having a bit of a negative new moment they'll say positivity <laughs> so it's like peer-to-peer -peer, um embedding really of those values and i can't tell you as a manager how great it is to, to ha actually have them on the wall to be able to you know, if there's something that I need to pick someone up in in the team, uh, and then it's so easy because you've got this list of values to just do that with. And more importantly, it really helps you to celebrate things as well. So we celebrate every month in our staff meetings, um, people in our team that have demonstrated exceptional values, don't we? So, yeah. so every month of the five values, we have an example of somebody within Linton that's, you know, done something to demonstrate uh, one of those those values and that just works incredibly well um, to embed them across the team yeah 
So I would highly advise anybody um, thinking about this to, to get on and have a look at um, their company values. Amazon has some really interesting company values, as do a lot of the big companies nowadays. So it's quite interesting, I think, to have a little look around at what other people are, are talking about in terms of their, their value systems. Um, and yeah, that's, we're, we're open to Q&A, I think, now. So happy to take any questions. I hope that was useful for people. So I think, John, you'll be able to access the question yeah, now that I've shot, stopped my screen share. Yeah, uh, Someone just asking us a, a, a good question. Where's our training centre based, Hayley? Oh, yeah. OK, so the training centre is in Holmes Chapel. Um, so that is it's near Knutsford in Cheshire. So just off the M6 in Cheshire. We're not actually there at the moment. We're at home, as, as you might imagine. Yes. Um, <laughs> Thanks for bearing with us for the um, internet. Yeah, sorry about the Wi-Fi there. But yeah. 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 I think it's, it's also, I mean, for me, you talked about the values, Hayley, and I think it, it changed what we do and the way we do things in terms of just articulating behaviour a lot more. Yeah. We talk about how we'd want to behave with our, you know, our customers, our suppliers, and each other. And I think that's that's a big thing for me. Is that values aren't just, um, you know, they're not. We, if you look on our website, our values are probably hidden away there somewhere. It's not at the forefront because it's just something that underlies us, like foundations, like a, a fabric that holds us all together. Yeah. It's, but it's a great opportunity just. When we get new people, for example, in recruitment now, we use them a lot, don't we? Mm. We're looking for people. We even have a section of our recruitment that asks questions to try and identify the people that would fit with our values. Values can be very different for different companies and different cultures. And you should make sure that the values, you know, fit, fit with your own clinic, for example. Mm. But, but you can use them to help drive people in, in your establishments already, their behaviour equally new people coming in as well. Mm. A couple more questions here, Hayley. Can you see these or not? Yeah, I can. So how many of a group do you take for training and, and would we come to Scotland? Uh, yes, so we, if we're supplying training with a device, then we train up to five people and we do that at, the premise, at your premises. So we're happy to travel. So Can't asking, wait to it? start travelling again. I know. <laughs> yeah, get it, out to the other side of it. Wouldn't it be good to... Uh, <laughs> Be able to do that, yeah. Uh, any new devices or treatments coming out? I know we've got a lot in the pipeline, haven't we? Yes, uh, we do, but I'll just talk about my favorite one because it's my favorite, <laughs> and that's the Onda. So I've, I've actually been very sneaky and managed to get one of these to come home with me whilst I'm on lockdown. Um, oh, and this, <laughs> this is hey perks of the job this is a device for cellulite so I feel like so so well I don't feel like and we know so many women have cellulite and there are some good treatments on the market um, for it but there's there's nothing like the Onda so the Onda is very very unique in that it uses 2.45 um, gigahertz frequency which is within the microwave range to heat and destroy the fat cells, whilst also making the septate of the cellulite more springy. So it treats the bumps and it treats the dimples and it's just a revolution for cellulite. So I just think this is something that so many women, I mean, the results we're seeing are absolutely amazing. So go and have a look at it online. Um, Tatler Cosmetic Surgery Guide named it as the best treatment for your bum in 2020 uh, so definitely that one is a is a game changer really when it comes to cellulite so yeah very exciting technology yeah okay yes michelle we can do that for you i'll i'll get that out for you okay. I've, got, I've got window cleaners in front of me here by the way Hayley. 
<laughs> I thought I'd rather stop working. <laughs> they clean your windows, really? Yeah, clean it. I don't know why. I'm staying inside. Hmm. Ah, okay. Um, so Michelle said, I found writing my values difficult. I started after listening to Hayley recently with AE. I'm currently a one man band. Trying to put my brand identity into writing is really difficult. I found this session useful. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would talk to some other people. I, th I think it is difficult when you're just, it's just you having to think about it. Maybe you should have a conversation with a couple of your best clients. Um, and just ask them what what they feel uh, makes you different and makes you stand out. Um, Do you know what I suggest as well, Hayley, on that is if you get a rough idea of what you feel they are. I like the, the example you gave. If you were to list 10, 10 words or things that represent you, then ask your clients to pick the top three and see if there's some consistency across across mm -hmm. their it's hard for a client if you've got clients you know to say you know, what do you think our values are i mean that's yeah. not the question to ask is it but if you would say look look at this list of 10 words can you just circle the, the three or four that you really associate with us it's a lot easier for uh, someone to do that but you're then looking for consistency off uh, across a few clients and that helps you really then narrow down to where you really want to be mm. yeah i think that's useful really useful advice See if we have another one. Um, what course would you recommend to build confidence using your IPL? So do you have an IPL at the moment? And if you do, then I would say, uh, if it's a Linton, then we do free of charge clinical update training days once a quarter. And we're looking at bringing those virtual. So we're looking at getting those online soon so people can still take part in those. Um, oh, okay, that, that's answered the question, I think. So yeah, we're, so we do our, we'll, we'll hopefully be running with Sam Hills, our clinical update training days online. In fact, it's sort of better than online because you can do it virtually like this. So we can have six, six or seven clinic um, owners in a room in a virtual room like this uh, with Dr Sam Hills so you can see the slides that she goes through and you'll be able to see the other people um, that are in the chat ask them questions and chat to Sam live as well so it's a bit better than just being sat you know going through slides and a pre-recorded presentation it is fully immersive and you know virtual Q&A much like this better than this one even better than the webinar format Okay, you're welcome. Well, thanks ever so much, everybody, for um, taking the time to uh, listen to us today. And I hope it's been useful. And just keep your eye out. Tomorrow, we're actually running a session with an expert clinic owner, uh, Maria from Acutis Clinics, is coming in to do a live Q and A with us. And then we've got Dr. H. Cat from Cat and Co. Aesthetics on Wednesday and a great talk from Laura Moxham on Wednesday about Google Ads and how you can make the most of your Google advertising at this time. And then Sam Hills on Thursday is doing an overview of aesthetic laser technology. So it's quite a busy week. You can register for all of these um, with the links on our social media, but equally, if you miss any of them, then we will be putting them up onto our YouTube channel. So if you just keep checking in with the YouTube, then you know you'll 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 get access to all of the talks that we're doing. Thanks ever so much.